University of San Antonio. We certainly appreciate all of you being here on this Monday morning and joining us in this momentous occasion. Well, it's certainly great to see a full house, so all of you, thank you so much for being here. I sincerely appreciate it. I'd like to introduce the list of our speakers who are going to be joining us this morning. We have Dr. Alfonso Chiscano, who is from the Canary Islands and is a huge supporter of Instituto Cervantes and has been working on this day for over 20 years. So we're very, very, very pleased to have him with us. We have Ramiro Cavazos, who is the President and CEO of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We have Sherazad Dalashahi from the City of San Antonio's International Protocol Office. We have Ambassador Enrique Panay from the Council General's Office. He is the Council General Office in Houston for Spain. We have Raul Rodriguez, our Honorary Consul of Spain in San Antonio. Anastasio Sanchez Zamorano, who is the Director of the Cervantes Institute. And of course, our President, Dr. Maria Hernandez Ferrier. I'd also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the piano playing of our very own Mario Vasquez, who certainly provided us with the atmosphere for this morning. Thank you very much, Mario. <laughs> and, and by the way, uh, my name is Douglas Carter. Uh, I'm your host this, this morning, and I'm your Associate Vice President for External Affairs and Global Partnerships. And this has been a partnership that we've been working on for this university for approximately 14 months. So it's a very exciting day for all of us. And once again, thank you so much for being here. And with that, I'd like to have Dr. Chiscano come up. Good morning. 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 I know she's here. Lee Bala, over there. James Avey, over here. It was, it was the team that we have been working on in this field. Um, Ambassador Panes, Beatriz de Panes, and Honorary Consul of Spain in San Antonio, Raúl Rodríguez. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a sergeant, and I operate better than giving speeches. <laughs> so we'll be short and to the point. Nunca es tarde si la dicha es buena. Took me about 22 years to get to where we are today. I remember in 1972, when we came uh, to San Antonio to practice. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> being two and a half hours, Houston, San Antonio, everybody went to Houston to, have, to get the heart operated. So we have to work 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 for 35 years. So now I'm starting to slow down. I sleep during the night like a normal human. <laughs> and I'm getting to know my family. Well, uh, when we start to get patients from Europe, from Canary Island, Spain, I noticed that my administrative assistant, oh, by the way, Jan Mundin, Jan, Jan, where are you? Well, she's wonderful. Thank you, thank you. I noticed that they couldn't speak Spanish. They were with text made, uh, Spanish English, so I said, in no way. So one day the phone rang, and a senator from Canary Island in Madrid say, you know what? We're studying the Instituto Cervantes. And I said, well, I'm, I'm in the airplane there for the day. So we had the pleasure to meet Don Nicolás Sánchez Albornoz, who was the first director of the Cervantes Institute. Nicolás today is 86 years old. I just was with him the fall yesterday. He's strong like a, like, a, like a bull. And of course, thanks to him, we started around. We went through the looking for the building and looking for money to put together. I know Maria, you know that. You do that very often. So we went through the Benedictine convent in South Alamo. We have everything ready. Uh, they look at me and say, well, we need a million dollars to fix it. I said, well, I don't think my wife can, can, can be angry with that. We don't have a million dollars. So and then every four years, the director the directions of the Cervantes chain, the director chain, is, is a position that is attached to the government. So we lost that 
point, uh, we have we even show up in the bulletin official del gobierno, SMS, saying San Antonio will be the next center. We missed that one. And we went through several other bu these uh, buildings. Oh, you remember the Institute of Art right behind the Magnet Museum, a beautiful building. Well, they didn't know for sure if Cervantes will pay the rent or no, so went away. We went to the Sears, the Sears building across the street of the Ursula uh, Convent, the today Southwest Health Center, went out. Finally, Ricardo, my good friend Ricardo Romo, Jesus Valdez, we got a floor of the Architectural College in downtown campus. The president of the director of uh, Cervantes King, Cesar Molina, and well, he didn't like the building, you know, how much money uh, you can raise. I said, I'm tired to raise money, so we're not, we're nothing here. In 2013, I got a call from my friend, uh, Dr. Ferrer. He said, well, Chico, we need to answer. <laughs> this is what? <laughs> yeah. And put it together with the Musa. So I start to, to be set with Douglas, with Maria, uh, with the whole team, and that's what we are today. You will wonder what was my motivation. When my kids went to public school, middle school and high school in MacArthur, I walked a couple of times in their Spanish classes, and I was horrified. They didn't know how to teach the Spanish. They were putting a little video, Catedral de Burgos. So, if we only get that for the future of the kids in San Antonio, I'll be very happy. Thank you, Maria. Dr. Chiscano is, is very humble, but this has been a passion of his for over 23 years. So uh, we're all very emotional, and it's been a tremendous joy working with him, and this is just the beginning. Ramiro Cavazos with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Buenos días. Pues me da mucho gusto estar aquí con ustedes. This is a day important for San Antonio. Uh, Dr. Chiscano, thank you for your stewardship for many, many years. Uh, Spain and U.S. relations and Canary Islands relations start and end with Dr. Chiscano. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. I'm very honored to uh, give a few, few remarks. I wanted to uh, thank uh, our new consul uh, and his wife Beatriz, uh, welcome to San Antonio, uh, to your new home. Our consul honorario Raul Rodriguez Barrocio, thank you for your leadership, Raul, on the cultural and historic and also trade side with your great background uh, between uh, not just our country and Mexico, but many other efforts that you're involved with. Thank you, Raul. And Dr. Ferrier, uh, who was in my leadership San Antonio class, uh, 27 years ago, uh, she was the shining light of that class, and they were all leaders, but she was the leader amongst all of the group. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ferrier, for having us here today. I'd like to recognize uh, a woman, an entrepreneur, who's a shining example of uh, the history of La Cámara Mexicana de Comercio de San Antonio. We were founded in 1929 on Cinco de Mayo here in San Antonio by the Mexican consulate and uh, of course with deep roots in Spain. And our chair this year is uh, the largest woman-owned business in South Texas. She's the CEO of Alamo Travel. And our chairman of the board is Patricia Pliego Stout. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you, Patricia. Really, in the words of Dr. Chiscano, tres cosas, three things. One. Uh, thanks to our work at the Chamber, uh, we have trade missions to Spain every year. And on one of those trade missions, we took a, a, a great delegation from Texas A&M uh, to uh, make those connections. I want to thank Jose Maria, our Chief of Staff, who's a native of Madrid, 
because it was Dr. Chiscano who eight years ago said, you need to go to Spain every year, no questions asked, and you need to hire a Spaniard on your staff who knows what they're doing, and he knows what he's doing, and, and uh, our team has made a commitment not just to go to Mexico every year, we've gone to Israel also, and, and, but to go to Spain, because we were founded more than 300 years ago by the Canary Islanders, and we need to pay our respects to this important part of our culture. So uh, thank you, Consul, for, for being here with us today, and we look forward to working with you uh, in Spain. Secondly, uh, we build on relationships. Uh, Avengoa Water, uh, uh, Texas A&M, San Antonio, uh, Loyola de Andalusia, uh, and the Cervantes Institute. I was with Don Nicolás and Dr. Chiscano last year, uh, breaking bread to talk about the Institute and how important it is. This has been a dream for more than 20 years, and uh, thanks to the, our friends at Texas A&M San Antonio, it's becoming a reality today. I also want to recognize our board members, Mario and, and of course, Maria and Dr. Reina. I don't know if Dr. Reina is here, uh, but let's give him a round of applause. He heads up our education initiative. And Mario was with us on our most recent Spain trip also. Uh, uh, thank you, Mario, for your beautiful piano playing. Also, he's back there. Let's give him a round of applause. And last but not least, as I was walking up to the campus, I was uh, enthralled, Maria. This is the most beautiful campus I've been to in many, many years. And I remember as the city's director of economic development working to recruit companies like Toyota and to keep companies like Rackspace here the seven years I was there and to build on trade. One of those important initiatives was to build a Texas A&M campus uh, in San Antonio. There were many people against it. They thought that we were fine with just the UTSA presence and the other universities. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to, to say that thanks to Senator Madla, uh, Senator Udeste, so many leaders, many of you in the room represented, you all kept the fire burning. And Texas A&M San Antonio one day will be the largest campus in San Antonio and the largest in the A&M system, thanks to the roots and the foundation being built by each of you and by the administration and by Dr. Fair. So it is perfect that the Cervantes Institute be here in the heart of San Antonio. We're very honored at the Hispanic Chamber to call you our friends and our neighbors, and we will do anything for you. Please pick up the phone and call us. And now representing the city of San Antonio is our Chief of Protocol and Head of International Relations, Shahrazad Dalashahi. Thank you, Douglas. Dr. Maria Ferrier and esteemed members of Texas A&M University community, faculty and staff, Ambassador and Mrs. Enrique Panez, uh, Mr. Anastasio Sanchez, and of course, Raul Rodriguez Barrosio and Dr. Chiscano, as well as all of you, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to direct the International Relations Office of the City of San Antonio. And as part of our work, uh, as you can imagine, using languages is fundamental. The ability to communicate <coughs> makes the difference to being able to translate things adequately in our line of work. If we are unable to communicate, we're unable to make some very important things happen. Fortunately, I'm very lucky that I am a fluent Spanish speaker. In fact, I am here uh, in part, and Douglas asked me to speak a little bit about my role uh, learning languages and studying Spanish, so to highlight the importance of Spanish language learning. I um, started studying Spanish in high school, in England, and it was the beginning of a, what, you, what I would say, the beginning of a wonderful relationship with language study overall. 
by the time I got to university, I opted to study modern languages. It was a full degree in modern languages in Spanish and Arabic. And for up until uh, I think my third year at university, I had actually spoken Spanish with teachers from, from all over Spain, primarily the Basque country, uh, from uh, Catalan teachers, and I had a very uh, strong Spanish accent that disappeared when I went to Mexico for the first time as part of my study abroad program. In those days when we had study abroad actually, the only people in the world who could go and study abroad, in England at least, were people who studied languages like me. And I was given the option to go to Mexico or to, to Spain, and I remember being in England thinking, oh, Mexico is very exotic, so I went to Mexico. <laughs> and of course, my decision to go to Mexico changed my life, because Six months after I came back to England, I came back with my uh, Mexican boyfriend, who then became my husband, <laughs> and I came back with a totally different accent. I remember coming back to university. This had been just after the Mexican earthquake, and I was late for um, the semester. My plane had been delayed, naturally, because of the uh, situation that had come up in 1985 coming back to university and being greeted by my professors. And the first thing my professor said to me, what happened? You're, you're, not, you, you're not the same person. You speak totally differently. And, um, and again, the, over the years, Spanish language became my second language. I always say that I'm, I grew up bilingually. I spoke English and Farsi at home. And uh, because I was a... Uh, student of languages, I learned to speak many languages, but really I, I can honestly say that Spanish became the most important language after English for me. And also in my professional life, I have worked for many years in the area of the promotion of Spanish language. And um, I could say easily it was about 20 years, 25 years in education, in higher education and K-12. And so I understand uh, the importance of an organization like the Instituto Cervantes. But it occurs to me, and again, I, I say this in, in my role of translating and communicating information, that many of you most probably don't know what the Instituto Cervantes is or how important it is. Many of you may be thinking, okay, this is an organization from Spain and Texas A&M is signing an agreement with them. So I want to give you some parallels, just to help you understand who the Instituto Cervantes is. In the United States, when foreign students come to study in university campuses, they are obliged, especially if English is not their first language, to take the TOEFL exam, correct? And that's a, required by students all over the world. And there are centers set up all around the world for people to go prepare for the TOEFL and to take the TOEFL. And without those results, usually most universities in the United States and even Canada will not allow them in. It's the same, say, for instance, with uh, universities in Great Britain. We talk about the Cambridge First Certificate exam, which is also equally used. So I want you to take that and I want you to imagine now in Spanish. You want to go study in Spain, you want to go study uh, somewhere in Latin America, you have to show your proficiency in language. The Instituto Cervantes is a government, belong, is funded by the Spanish government, but they, in addition to obviously teaching, and I know we're going to hear from uh, Anastasio Sanchez who will speak to us about it directly, but they, they are the institution that validates the, um, the proficiency in the different levels of Spanish. And so the exam and the diploma that they have created and they have worked collaboratively with universities in throughout the Spanish-speaking world is very important, of equal importance as a TOEFL. The Instituto Cervantes is, um, I believe, in 50 countries. They have 80 centers around the world. They have different business models depending on what they need to use in different uh, 
communities. San Antonio is a different model, say, from other centers in the United States. But the, what the, what's going to happen here in, at Texas A&M promises to be a very successful model because it's about bringing the two institutions together, working together collaboratively, and integrating the, the work of the Cervantes Institute here in uh, Texas A&M and its curriculum. So I hope that with that I've helped you understand, if you really didn't know, about the Instituto Cervantes, the importance of who they are and why today is so symbolic and important. Um, many of you who obviously are from San Antonio and have been here a long time will know of other institutions in the city that teach Spanish, uh, such as our many prestigious universities, as well as two Mexican university campuses we have here, the Universidad Autónoma de Guadalajara and the UNAM. And I, for those of you who, who know those institutions, I want you to know that, for instance, the UNAM entered into an agreement with the Instituto Cervantes and last year opened up a Mexico Studies Center in the Instituto Cervantes in Madrid. So those connections are there and they all work together, not against each other, but together, and that is important to note. So uh, my job in the International Relations Office, I feel, and one of the goals that I have, is to continue to raise the profile of San Antonio globally, to create an awareness outside San Antonio about our city, about how wonderful we are, but also to create an awareness in our city about the outside world. We have two sister cities in Spain, in the Canary Islands. We have sister cities around the world. But again, an important part of the, the work with sister city relationships is educational exchanges. It's promoting culture. And I always say, education, culture, they are the precursors to the business relationships that come because they are the base of the relationships that come based on trust and mutual respect. So um, I hope that in our small way we're able to make a contribution. I'm very, very proud, happy and honored to be here uh, on behalf of the city of San Antonio and we wish Texas A&M University and the Instituto Cervantes best of luck with this new venture. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the Consul General of Spain in Houston, Ambassador Enrique Panez. Buenos días a todos. Presidente Ferrier. Señoras, señores, cónsul. Eh, me encuentro aquí encantado, delighted to be here, especially even more so because I could come with my wife and you've been so kind to both of us. But even before being delighted, I'm honored because I know I have the opportunity to participate in an important event. And it happens shortly after my assumption of functions in Houston and Consul General there since the beginning of August and lucky enough to take part in this ceremony. It is indeed an important uh, event and I'm sure it's the starting point of a very fruitful cooperation that will be to the benefit of students but to the benefit of the community, of the whole community as such, because we have in Instituto Cervantes a window to Spanish life and culture. And this will help everybody to know better what the Spanish life and culture means today. Uh, a few days ago I was, I participated in a function organized in Houston by an organization called Talento Bilingüe. And uh, the chairman of the organization said, Talento bilingüe. And being bilingüe, it's twice as much talento. 
In Spain, we have uh, a certain knowledge of that because, as you know, we have bilingual traditions, three. We have Los Gallegos, Los Vascos, and Los Catalanes. And we are, I'm a Catalan myself, we are bilingual because, of course, we all share uh, our own language with other, the other own language, which is Spanish. And we know that being bilingual uh, brings uh, important benefits. It opens the mind to the learning of other languages, apart from our two own languages. And I'm sure that uh, knowing better the Spanish language and being familiar with the Spanish culture will also stimulate the eagerness of your students to go deeper into the knowledge of foreign languages as such. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity of uh, being here. I told Dr. Chiscano yesterday that meeting him was like meeting a historical figure because <laughs> one uh, listens and uh, knows about Dr. Chiscano. So many people talking about Dr. Chiscano when finally one is able to shake hands with him, it's like a historical event. <laughs> <laughs> Having uh, Raul uh, Rodriguez as Consul of Spain here could be a, a very good reason to think I'm so busy, at least San Antonio is covered. <laughs> but I will do the other way around. Uh, I'm so lucky having Raul here. San Antonio is worth going there very often because I know that every single time I will find interesting things to do together with him. <coughs> President Ferrier, thank you again for your invitation. Señoras y señores, muchas gracias por su atención. Muchos éxitos en el futuro a la colaboración con el Instituto Cervantes. Buenos días. Ladies and gentlemen, our very own Honorary Consul General to Spain, Raúl Rodríguez. Thank you, Douglas. Good morning. Buenos días. Eh, permítanme hablar del corazón. Durante cuatro minutos, prometo, chico, no pasar menos cuatro minutos. Eh, y, y expresar un poco sobre la línea de quienes me antecedieron la palabra, y especialmente el señor embajador, eh, lo que siento importante, mi percepción de la importancia de el, la, la apertura del Cervantes en Texas en San Antonio. Eh, pero, si me permiten, antes que nada, quisiera hacer una brevísima reflexión. I would like to add my recognition to two of our dearest friends and leaders in San Antonio, uh, Dr. Maria Hernández Ferrier and Dr. Alfonso Chiscano, our dear Chico. This uh, would clearly not be happening if it were not for their vision and their determination. We are honored to have Ambassador Panes Calpe and his wife here with us to celebrate them and this signing. So let me underscore, as I was saying in Spanish, uh, five angles very quickly in four minutes what the Instituto Cervantes represents for San Antonio as the bastion of the best of Spain's cultural diplomacy in our re-engagement in San Antonio with Spain and with Spanish. Numero uno, Spanish in America spells nothing less than history. The first European language spoken in our territory. It is a testament, it is a tribute to the presence half a millennium ago Ponce de Leon in St. Augustine, San Agustin de Florida. Four decades, four decades before Jamestown was even imagined. It is the reconciliation of two divergent paths of Western civilization that suddenly come together in this wonderful land of melting pots. Philip II, Felipe II, hand in hand with Luther. Martin de Arguelles and Virginia Dare, out on a date. You can Google them. <laughs> Reformation and counter-reformation in a splendid mestizaje, all with Spanglish as a verbal born bond of sorts. Numero dos. Spanish is demography. It symbolizes the new landscape in America, or rather the rebirth of one. We were not always a minority in this land. We became one. 
Today we are growing four times as fast as the general population, ten times as fast as non-Hispanics. In 50 years, in 50 years, one-third of America will be Hispanic. And before the end of the century, this will be the largest Hispanic nation in the world. Número tres, Spanish is geography, gravitation. It spells neighborhood, common ground. Fernando Enrique Cardoso once said that Brazil is a country located between the Atlantic and Spanish. We might add San Antonio is located somewhere between Oklahoma and Spanish. <laughs> there are 8 million Americans learning Spanish as we speak, more than all other foreign languages combined. And for the tapestry of Hispanics, it is a common linguistic reference, unity and diversity, another assimilation force. Numero cuatro, Spanish is exploration. To learn a foreign language, as Ambassador Panez was underscoring, and to become versed in the culture that surrounds it, is to enter a new universe and expand horizons. A universe that its speakers inhabit, a new frontier, a vessel that shapes how people organize their thinking, their lives, their reality, their transcendence. To be fluent in Spanish allows us to resonate more fully to the metaphors of Cervantes, the foresight of Ortega Gasset, the poetry of Paz and Garcia Lorca, the imaginary of Borges and Onetti, the craftsmanship of Vargas Llosa, the, the modern originality of Marias, Cercas, Ruiz Zafón, and so many others. Retracing the trails of our ancestral mestizo diasporas, retelling the missing story of ourselves as we become someone new. Número cinco, finalmente. Spanish is passion and exuberance, a vibrant complement to the compact and competent efficiency we find in English. A new and more prolific cultural DNA in America is born from the subtleties and crossroads of languages, where, for example, counterclockwise spreads and overflows into ten words as en el sentido contrario al de las manecillas del reloj. And translating this establishmentarianism would require a couple of pages and more time than we have available today. <laughs> Dear friends, the Instituto is Spain and Spanish but it is first and foremost a place of complication. When Mario Vargas Llosa learned that he had been awarded the Nobel Prize four years ago, he was lecturing in New York City. He faced the dilemma, hold the press conference at the Spanish consulate or at the Peruvian conference, consulate, I'm sorry, being a citizen of both nations. He chose the, the Instituto Cervantes. And he did so because it was a venue that embraced his soul. We now have that unique lugar de encuentro in San Antonio. Enhorabuena. Muchas felicidades. Gracias. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the, the Instituto Cervantes is our new friend, Anastasia Sanchez Zamorano, or if you see me running around the hall saying Tacho is coming, this would be Tacho. <laughs> so with that, Tacho. Buenos días y muchas gracias por, por su asistencia. Uh, it's an honor and a, and a pleasure for me to be here today and join this wonderful group of people that they have made this possible of the, the persistence and interest over the years. Um, so all my thanks to the group of Tamusa, especially to Dr. Ferrier and very especially to Dr. Fiscano. Uh, I have to express the interest and support of our general director in Madrid and the general secretary. They are really interest, interested in uh, this agreement and they have, in Spain, we have all the, the eyes looking at this, this city right now and waiting that this agreement could be an, a success. Hmm? We have been talking about bilingual education and bilingualism, but I think when, when we are in the United States, bilingualism 
means only one thing, and it's English and Spanish. Although bilingualism in general you know, meaning means other things. So Instituto Cervantes is a large organization and now is uh, is cooperating and collaborating with other other countries like Mexico, Peru, Colombia, Guatemala, Chile, uh, Argentina is gonna be the next one joining the the, the project. So uh, we are here in San Antonio for whatever things you need from us and to uh, contribute with our little grain of sand uh, to the society and to the community of San Antonio. As everybody has said, we have different aspects. We have one that is teaching the teaching of Spanish. Uh, it was created in Instituto Cervantes to promote our language and promote our uh, culture. And when I say culture, I'm not talking about Spain. I'm talking about the Spanish culture of all the countries that speak Spanish. That is one of the aspects. The other one is to provide a <coughs> relationship with uh, universities and the, and the Hispanic uh, world, supporting them with a nice library and uh, materials of didactics. Then we also have uh, the cultural activities that I think is going to be one of the greatest part here in San Antonio. But uh, in teaching, in teaching we have also, you know, the inside classes and online classes. And I think also that this is a great field mm -hmm, that we can develop here in San Antonio. I know that uh, there is other universities, other uh, academies, you know, institutions that teach Spanish. We are not going to, we are not going to compete with them. We are going to try to offer to the society and to the community of San Antonio something that they are not offering. Something that we can, you know, uh, fulfill in our our needs, you know, for the community, and uh, and anything that any company or institution, institutional, you know, uh, governmental institution or any other kind will need from us. Um, we also want to to have, and that is going to be one of our goals, is to have the support of enterprises, you know, companies, in order to develop a, a program of cultural activities to give to San Antonio the idea of what, what the Hispanic world is. I, want, I would like that Instituto Cervantes would be the bridge that connect two worlds again, you know, Europe, uh, uh, USA, and USA with Latin America. In that particular uh, point, I would like to say that apart from the 80 institutes that we have all over the world, we have so many uh, uh, creative centers, associated centers, all over Latin America. And they will be part of your network, becoming a part of Instituto Cervantes. You will be also uh, getting in contact with all those uh, associated centers in, in Mexico, uh, Guatemala, uh, Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia, Bolivia, Peru, Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, and Argentina. So that's going to be also part of the agreement. And just to finish and give the, the word to Dr. Ferrier, I'm going to end up saying like Humphrey Bogart said in the, in the movie of Casablanca, and I really think and I hope that this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs>
and the fact that we're actually being able to celebrate this signing and to participate in this in the first week of, of, Heritage, of Hispanic Heritage Month is also very important, I think, to South Texas and specifically San Antonio. So without further ado, our president, Dr. Maria Hernandez Ferrier. Buenos dias. Qué gusto que están aquí con nosotros. De veras que es un honor. Ambassador Dr. Chiscano Raúl, I'll tell you what, today is a red letter day for Texas A&M University, San Antonio. I see some of our students and faculty and staff here. I'm so glad that you're here to witness this historic event. This collaboration led by our beloved Dr. Chiscano and our VP for External Affairs and Global Partnerships, Douglas, along with many that are here this morning, turned a long-time dream into reality. Instituto de Cervantes is not only a partner, but an integral part of the university in every area. Education, business, arts and sciences, preparing our students to work in the Spanish-speaking world as the significance of Spain, Mexico and Latin America continue to influence culture, education, and business in our beautiful city. <coughs> Three years ago, with the support of our Chancellor and the A&M system, we brought the largest private Picasso exhibition in North America to this campus. People came here by the thousands to see it. In conjunction with that exhibition, we were honored to present fellow Malaguenian, Bernardo de Galvez to the public, most who were not aware of Spain's important role in our own American Revolution. And today, through our beautiful Cultural Arts Center in downtown San Antonio, we will further highlight our Spanish heritage and we will outreach beyond our students and faculty to the community at large, as, a, as signified by the presence of the dignitaries joining us today. So again, welcome to A&M San Antonio. This is Spain's new home. And now I would ask Cervantes Director Zamarano, Ambassador Panes, and Honorary Consul General Rodriguez to join me at the table for this very historic moment, the signing of our Memorandum of Understanding. Would you please join me?
Gracias.